Hi guys, how are you today? I'm going to do a video blog and in my blog today I'm going to go ahead and go over a couple of different kinds of herbs and their uses and some of the cautions you should use while using them. On my blog I had a person ask me about tooth pain. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the myrrh that I suggested. Um, myrrh is in a resin form. This I recommend you do not use pregnant. It's not very good for the unborn fetus. So be very, very careful and cautious and don't use it while you're pregnant or nursing. Um, it is resiny. It does, it's kind of a, like an orangey yellowish color. Um, when you buy it from the herb stock dealer, it's very, very sticky. So if you leave it sit for a little while, it will reclump itself back up. You're gonna need a mortar or powder sole to go ahead and grind this up into a fine powder to be used. When you do, if you decide to do use this as a gargle, as I suggested, I recommend that you not swallow this because if you do have any infections in your teeth, you're going to drag the infection down into your tonsils, and that's not something you want to do. So be cautious when you're using that and spit. <laughs> the next one I want to go over will be organic lavender flowers. Now you can go, you can get organic lavender flowers at your herbal dealer shop, and they're really useful as a mild stomach tonic. And they're also really good for migraines, nervousness, and it's just a naturally calming plant. You can also use it for colic in babies because it does help with gas. Now, they are little purple flowers and they look like this. And they're really pretty and they smell beautifully. You can also use these in a bath to help with your help with some body pain and tension. So be really it's really useful in a tub. Okay, the next one I want to go over is gonna be chamomile. Chemline is really good for nervousness and irritability. It's also an antispasmatic and it's really good for digestive disorders and menstrual cramps. Everybody loves menstrual cramps, right? No. Anyways, so this uh, this you can make a tea out of and you can drink the tea um, and it's really good and effective at relieving those cramps. It looks like this. It's just a while. Uh, it looks like a little uh, a little tiny flower. Um, bud on the top and you uh, all you would do with this is you would go ahead and you would uh, steep this in some boiling water for about 10 minutes go ahead and strain the flowers out of it and then make a tea out of it and just drink it you can also find chamomile in a straight tea in a tea bag at your grocery store and it's really good for those menstrual cramps and it's a much easier way of treating yourself naturally than using pamperin the next thing I want to go over is going to be organ the organic ginger root. This promotes cleansing of your entire system. It's really, really useful and it's awesome on your stomach. It also helps with like those healing the insides of your stomach. For instance, if you have acid reflux or corrosion in your stomach, by using any ginger products, you can actually help yourself heal. Um, and it definitely beats those pills they give you to fix that. Now, this is a powdered form. You can also get this in root form. You can also get it in candy form. My children love the little candies, but I do have to caution you that they are kind of spicy. They're really, really good for you. Don't overdose yourself on the ginger. Um, so if you're going to eat the candies, I would recommend um, eating maybe no more than four of them um, in a day. So, um, but it's really effective for cleaning your, for cleaning your system out. Um, the next one I want to go over today, let's see, um, how about we go over the organic peppermint leaf. Organic peppermint is good for colds, fevers, and gas. It's also good for headaches and nausea. Um, and it's also a good supplier of blood, uh, oxygen in your bloodstream. Okay, and it also helps your heart muscles. Now, organic peppermint leaf, now they don't have very much of a smell to them, uh, the actual leaves themselves until you break them up and, and then smell your fingers, they smell really, really good. But basically what it looks, it looks like this, and you, you can make a tea out of this and you can also get this in, in your grocery store in a regular tea bag as well. Just make sure it's organic because you don't want them to add any more of those, add any preservatives to it because it's not necessary.
Okay, the next one we want to go over is going to be organic thyme leaf. Now this is uh, good for diarrhea, also really useful for hookworms. Um, don't overdo it on the thyme, because if you overdo it on the thyme, you could, you could possibly get poisoning symptoms from it, and you can also overstimulate your thyroid gland. You don't want to do that. Um, but it's also really useful. You can use this on your meats too, but it makes a very good tea for things, but just be cautious when you use it. Don't use too much, um, and be sparing with it. Okay, elderberries. Elderberries are really, really, really good for colds and allergies, and asthma, and things like bronchitis, um, and pneumonia, and even sinus congestion. Did you know that if you uh, mix this with peppermint, mullein, and golden seal, you can make yourself a cold remedy that'll knock the socks off the ones in the stores? Um, this looks like this, it's just berries. They're in here. I recommend that if you're going to get these that you can find them in your local herb dealer store. Um, and they are really useful. Um, be cautious on the elderberries because too much of them can cause symptoms of poisoning. So, be very careful with that. And last but not least, for today, we're going to go over wild sage. Now, I, you can buy regular sage at the store, or you can collect your own. Lucky for me, I happen to live in an area where the wild sage grows a lot, so I don't necessarily have to go to my herb dealer store to go ahead and get this. Um, it's known for reducing sweating or perspiration, um, and it also helps mommies who are weaning their babies to help dry up their milk um, and it is and it smells really 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 awesome you can also burn it as an incense because it, it, it helps to clean the home um, so let me go ahead and tell it uh, show you what it looks like just a little bit here just a second the wild sage is going to look similar to it looks like little uh, cotton on a stick, kind of, but um, it's quite nice and it smells very, very wonderful. And you can you can find this in your dry, in dry desert areas, or you can also buy it at your local herb dealer store. So, well, that pretty much covers all the ones I wanted to go over today. So I'm gonna go ahead and post on uh, um, on my next video blog. I'm gonna go ahead and post. What, uh, a couple of other herbs that you can use, what those look like, and their and their uses as well. Um, if you have any comments, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and then drop me a note. And um, if you need to know anything more about these specific ones that we went over today, I'll be more than happy to go ahead and tell you anything you need to know. Thank you, guys. Bye.